Jerry is safe underground in concrete bunkers. We've shot off over a million cannon shells, and what's the result? One dachshund with a slight limp. Shut up! Thank you. Right, I'm off the bed where I intend to sleep until my name changes to Rip Van Adder. this sort of thing. Right, that's it. Hello? Yes, yes, I'd like to leave a message for the head of the Flying Corps, please. To Air Chief Marshal Sir Hugh with Massingbird, Massingbird, VC, DFC and Bar. Message reads, where are you, you bastard? Here I am, sir. For God's sake, Baldrick, take cover. Why is that, sir? Because there's an air raid going on, and I don't want to have to write to your mother at London Zoo and tell her that her only human child is dead. Right, sir. It's just I didn't know there was an air raid on. I couldn't hear anything over the noise of the terrific display by our wonderful boys at the Royal Flying Corps, sir. What? I say, those chaps got off thunder in their airborne steeds, can't they just... Hello, what's going on here? Game of hide and seek. Excellent. Right, uh, I'll go and count to 100. Uh, no, better make it five, actually. Uh, oh, it's sardines! Oh, excellent, that's my favourite one, that. George! Yes, sir? Shut up and never say anything again as long as you live. Right, what, sir? <laughs> Crikey, but what a show it was, sir! Lord Flashart's flying aces! How we cheered when they spun, how we shouted when they dived, how we applauded when one chap got sliced in half by his own propeller. <laughs> well, it's all part of the joke for those magnificent men and their flying machines. For magnificent men, read biggest show-offs since Lady Godiva entered the royal enclosure at Ascot, claiming she had literally nothing to wear. <laughs> I don't care how many times they go up diddly up up, they're still gits. <laughs> Come on, sir. I'd love to be a flyer up there where the air is clear. The chances of the air being clear anywhere near you, Baldrick, are zero. Oh, sir, it would be great swooping and diving. Baldrick. Baldrick, what are you doing? I'm a Sopwith camel, sir. Well, it is a Sopwith camel. Ah, right. I always get confused between the sound of a Sopwith camel and the sound of a malodorous runt wasting everybody's time. <laughs> now, if you can do without me in the nursery for a while, I'm going to get some fresh air. Ha! Eat knuckle, Fritz! Look! How disgusting! A bosh on the sole of my boot! I just have to find a patch of grass to wipe it on! <laughs> Probably get stunned in the officer's mess! Sorry about the pong, you fellows! Trot in a bosh and can't get rid of the whiff! <laughs> Do you think we could dispense with the hilarious doggy do metaphor for a moment? <laughs> I'm not a Bosch, this is a British trench. Is it? Oh, that's a piece of luck. Thought I'd landed sausage side. <laughs> Might have used your phone. If word gets out that I'm missing, 500 girls will kill themselves. <laughs> I wouldn't want them on my conscience. Not that they ought to be on my face. <laughs> Hi, flash out here. Yeah. Cancel the state funeral, tell the king to stop blubbing. Flash is not dead. I simply ran out of juice. <laughs> yeah, and before all the girls start saying, oh, what's the point of living anymore, I'm talking about petrol. Woof, woof. <laughs> yeah, I dumped the kite on the proles, so send a car. Uh, General Melchett's driver should do. She hangs around with a big knob, so she'd be used to a fellow like me. Woof, woof. <laughs> Look, do you think you can make your obscene phone call somewhere else? <laughs> no, not in half an hour, you rubber desk Johnny. <laughs> send the bitch with the wheels right now, or I'll fly back to England and give your wife something to hang her towels on. <laughs> Hey, dig out your best booze and let's talk about me till the car comes. <laughs> yeah, I must be pretty impressed having Squadron Commander the Lord Flashheart drop in on your squally bit of line. Actually, no. I was more impressed by the contents of my handkerchief the last time I blew my nose. <laughs> yeah, like how. <laughs> You've probably got little pickers of me on the walls of your dugout, haven't you? <laughs> I bet you go all girly and giggly every time you... <laughs> 
Unfortunately, most of the infantry think you're a prat. <laughs> Ask them who they'd prefer to meet. Squadron Commander Flashheart and the man who cleans out the public toilets in Aberdeen. And they go for wee jock Poopong McPlop. <laughs> I honestly thought that the, the... My God! Yes, I suppose I am. <laughs> Lord Flashart, this is the greatest honour of my life. I hope I snuff it right now to preserve this moment forever. It could be arranged. Lord Flashart, I want to learn to write so I can send a letter home about this golden moment. So all the fellows hate me, eh? Not a bit of it. I'm your bloody hero, eh, old scat? Jesus. <laughs> now, Lord, I've got every cigarette card they ever printed of you. My whole family took up smoking just so that we could get the whole set. My grandmother smoked herself to death so we could afford the album. Oh, of course she did. Of course she did, the poor love-crazed old octogenarian. Uh, <laughs> well, all right, you fellas, let's sit us down and yawn about how amazingly attractive I am. Yes, would you excuse me for a moment? I've got some urgent business. There's a bucket outside I've got to be sickened to. <laughs> all right, you chaps, let's get comfy. You look like a decent British bloke. I'll pop the old booties on you, if that's OK. It would be an honour, my lord. Of course it would. Ah. <laughs> oh, have you any idea what it's like to have the wind rushing through your hair? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he has. Lucky <laughs> devil. So I flew straight through a bedroom window, popped a box of chops on the dressing table, machine gun my telephone number into the wall, and then shot off and shagged a sister. <laughs> Driver Parkhurst reporting for duty, my lord. Well, well, well. If it isn't little Bobby Parkhurst, saucier than a direct hit on a Heinz factory. I'm going to pick you up. Well, that's how I like my girls. Direct and to my point. Woof! Woof! Tell me how then, back to the bar. You should join the Flying Corps, George. That's the way to fight a war. Tasty tuck, soft beds, and a uniform so smart it's got a PhD from Cambridge. You could even bring the breath monster here. <laughs> Anyone can be a navigator if he can tell his arse from his elbow. Well, that's boring out, I fear. We're always looking for talented types to join the 20 Minuters. And there goes George. Tell you who then, Bobby. <laughs> Hush, here comes a whiz-bang. And I think you know what I'm talking about. Woof! <laughs> God, he's like crufts in here. Say, <laughs> what a splendid notion. The 20 Minuters. Soft tucker, tasty beds, fluffy uniforms. Begging your permission, sir, but why do they call them the 20 Minuters? Ah, oh, now, yes, now, this one is in my Brook Bond Book of the Air. Now, you have to uh, collect all the cards and then stick them into this wonderful presentation booklet. Uh, ah, here we are, 20 Minuters. Oh, damn, I haven't got the card yet. Ah, but the caption says, 20 minutes is the average amount of time new pilots spend in the air. 20 minutes. That's right, sir. I had a 20-hour watch yesterday with four hours overtime in two feet of water. Well, then, for goodness sake, sir, why don't we join? Yeah, be better than just sitting around here all day on our elbows. <laughs> no, thank you. I have no desire to hang around with a bunch of upper-class delinquents, do 20 minutes' work, and then spend the rest of the day loafing about in Paris, drinking gallons of champagne, and having dozens of moist, pink, highly experienced young French peasant girls galloping up and down my... Hang on. <laughs> Ah, oh, Captain Blackadder. Good morning, Captain Darling. What do you want? You're looking so well. I'm a busy man, Blackadder. Let's hear it, whatever it is. Well, you know, darling, every man has a dream. Hmm. And when I was a small boy, I used to watch the marsh warblers swooping in my mother's undercroft. <laughs> and I remember thinking, will men ever dare do the same? And you know... Oh, you want to join the Royal Flying Corps? Oh, that's a thought. <laughs> Could I? No, you couldn't. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Come on, darling, just give me an application form. It's out of the question. This is simply a ruse to waste five months of training, after which you'll claim you can't fly after all because it makes your ears go pop. <laughs> Come on, I wasn't born yesterday, Blackadder. More's the pity we could have started your personality from scratch. <laughs> so, the training period is five months, is it? It's no concern of yours if it's five years and comes with a free holiday in Tunisia, contraceptive supplied. <laughs> Besides, they wouldn't admit you. It's not easy getting transfers, you know. No, you've tried it yourself, have you? No, I haven't. <laughs> trust you to try and skive off to some cushier option. There's nothing cushier about life in the Women's Auxiliary Balloon Corps. <laughs> and then the bishop said, I'm awfully sorry, I didn't realise you meant organist. Hey. <laughs> hey. Thank you, George. Uh, uh, at ease, everybody. Now, where's my map? Come on, sir. Thank you. God, it's a barren, featureless desert out there, isn't it? <laughs> the other side, sir. Hello, George. What are you doing here? Me, sir? I just popped in to join the Royal Flying Corps. Hello, Blackadder. What are you doing here? 
Me, sir? I just popped in to join the Royal Flying Corps. And of course I said, bravo! I hope nothing. Because, you know, I've always had my doubts about you trenchy type fellows. I've always suspected there might be a bit too much of the battle-dodging, nappy-wearing, I'd rather have a cup of tea than charge stark naked a jerry about you. <laughs> if you're willing to join the 20 Minuters, then you're all right by me and welcome to marry my sister any day. Are you sure about this, sir? Certainly, you should hear the noise she makes when she eats a boiled egg. <laughs> Learn to get her out of the house. So, report back here, 0900 hours for your basic training. Crikey, I'm looking forward to today. Up diddly up, down diddly down. Whoops, poop, twiddly dee. <laughs> Decent scrap with a fiendish red baron, bit of a jolly old crash landing behind enemy lines. Capture, torture, escape, and then back home in time for tea and medals. George, who's using the family brain cell at the moment? <laughs> this is just the beginning of the training. The beginning of five long months of very clever, very dull men looking at machinery. Hey, girls, look at my machinery! <laughs> Enter the man who has no underwear. Ask me why. Why do you have no underwear, Lord Flash? Because the pants haven't been built yet that'll take the job on. <laughs> and that's the type of guy who's doing the training around here. Sit down. Well, 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 if it isn't old Captain Slackbladder. Slackbladder. <laughs> Couldn't resist it, eh, Slackbladder? Told you you thought I was great. All right, men, let's do it. <laughs> the first thing to remember is always treat your kite like you treat your woman. <laughs> How do you mean, sir? You mean, uh, you mean take her home at the weekend to meet your mother? <laughs> no, I mean get inside her five times a day and take her to heaven and back. I'm beginning to see why the suffragette movement want the vote. <laughs> hey, hey, any bird who wants to chain herself to my railings and suffer a jet movement gets my vote. Well, I'll see you in ten minutes for takeoff. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> what about the months of training? Hey, wet pants! This isn't the women's auxiliary balloon corps. You're in the twenty minuters now, uh, sir. Yes, sir. Right at the back. <laughs> I think we'd all be intrigued to know why you called the twenty minuters. Oh, Mister Thicker, imagine not knowing that. <laughs> well, it's simple. The average life expectancy for a new pilot is twenty minutes. <laughs> ah, life expectancy <laughs> of twenty minutes. That's right. Goggles on, chocks away, last one back's a homo! Hooray! So, we take off in ten minutes. We're in the air for twenty minutes. Which means we should be dead by twenty-five to ten. Harry Blighter, sir, this is a bit of a turn up for the plus fours. Shouldn't worry about it too much, back there. Flying's all about navigation. As long as you've got a good navigator, I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> They're right. This is a double. Whoops, whoops, a little wobble there. I'll get the hang of it, don't worry. All right, Baldrick, how many rounds have we got? Uh, 500, sir. Cheese and tomato for you, Rat. Right. What's up, Tally Bally How? What's this, sir? No, no, no. Baldrick, Baldrick, will you stop arsing about and get back in the pocket? Hey, sir, look, I can see a pretty red plane from up here. Woo! I don't Watch out, Baldick, it, it's stood right on our tail. Yes, now, this is developing into a distinctly boring situation. Lucky we're still on our side of the line, so ah! I'll crash and land and claim my ears went pop. First time out. Oh, let's hope we fall on something soft. Fine, I'll try and aim between General Melchin's ears. I don't believe it. A German prison cell. For two and a half years, the Western Front has been as likely to move as a Frenchman who lives next door to a brothel. <laughs> and last night, the Germans advance a mile and we land on the wrong side. Oh dear, Captain B, my tummy's gone all squirty. Well, that's because you're scared, Baldrick, and you're not the only one. I couldn't be more petrified if a wild rhinoceros had just come home from a hard day at the swamp and found me wearing his pyjamas, smoking his cigars and in bed with his wife. <laughs> I've heard what these Germans will do, sir. They'll have their wicked way with anything of woman born. Well, in that case, Baldrick, you're quite safe. <laughs> However, the Teutonic reputation for brutality is well-founded. Their operas last three or four days. <laughs> and they have no word for fluffy. I want my mum. Yes, it'd be good to see her. I should imagine a maternally outraged gorilla could be a useful ally. <laughs> That's a final scrap. Prepare to die like a man, Baldrick. Or well, as close as you can come to a man without actually shaving the palms of your hands. Good evening. I'm Oberleutnant von Gerhard. I have a message from the Baron von Richthofen, the greatest living German. Which, considering his competition consists entirely of very fat men in leather shorts burping to the tune of Schubert coming round the mountain, <laughs> is no great achievement. Yes! <laughs> and what is your message? It is, prepare for a fate worse than death. 
English flying fellow. Yeah. So it's a traditional warm German welcome. <laughs> also, he is saying, do not try to escape or you will suffer even worse. A fate worse than a fate worse than death. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> Yes, well, yes, yes, well, you see, it's all very well for you, isn't it? Sitting here behind your, behind your, behind your comfy desk. Don't you take that tone with me, Lieutenant. I'd rather be on a charge for insubordination. Well, I'd rather be on a charge for insubordination than on a charge of deserting a friend. How dare you talk to me like How that? Dare How dare you? Now then, now then, now, now then. Now then, now then, then now. <laughs> now then, what's going on here? That damn fool Blackadder has crashed his plane behind enemy lines, sir. This young idiot wants to go and try and rescue him. It's a total waste of men and equipment. He's not a damn fool, sir. He's a bloody right. hero. All right, all right. I'll deal with this, darling. Delicate touch needed, I fancy. <laughs> now, George, do you remember when I came down to visit you when you were a nipper for your sixth birthday? You used to have a lovely little rabbit, beautiful little thing, do you remember? Flossy. That's right, Flossy. <laughs> do you remember what happened to Flossy? You shot him. <laughs> That's right. It was the kindest thing to do after being run over by that car. By your car, sir. <laughs> yes, by my car. But that, too, was an act of mercy when you would remember that that dog had been set on him. Your dog, sir. <laughs> yes, yes, my dog. But what I'm trying to say, George, is that the state young Flossy was in after we'd scraped him off my front tire <laughs> is very much the state that young Blackadder will be in now. If not very nearly dead, then very actually dead. <laughs> Permission for lip to wobble, sir. <laughs> Permission granted. <laughs> Stout fellow. But surely, sir, you must allow me to at least try and save him. No, George, it would be as pointless as trying to teach a woman the value of a good forward defensive stroke. <laughs> Besides, it would take a superman to get him out of there, not the kind of weed who blubs just because somebody gives him a slice of rabbit pie instead of birthday cake. <laughs> I suppose all right, sir. Of course I am. Now let's talk about something more jolly, shall we? Look, this is the amount of land we've recaptured since yesterday. Oh, excellent. Um, what is the actual scale of this map, darling? Um, uh, one to one, sir. <laughs> Come again. Uh... The map is actually life-size, sir. It's superbly detailed. Look, there's a little worm. <laughs> so the actual amount of land retaken is... Excuse me, sir. 17 square feet, sir. Excellent. So you see, young Blackadder didn't die horribly in vain after all. If he did die, sir. <laughs> That's the spirit, George. If nothing else works, then a total pig-headed unwillingness to look facts in the face will see us through. <laughs> so... I'm the Red Baron von Richthofen, and you are the two English flying aces responsible for the spilling of the precious German blood of many of my finest and my blondest friends. <laughs> I have waited many months to do this. <laughs> you may have been right, Borders. Looks like we're going to get Roger to death after all. <laughs> do you want me to go first, sir? <laughs> Your English and your sense of humor. During your brief stay, I look forward to learning more of your wit, your punning, and your amusing jokes about the breaking of the wind. <laughs> well, Baldrick's the expert there. <laughs> I certainly am, sir. <laughs> How lucky your English are to find the toilet so amusing. For us, it is a mundane and functional item. For you, it's the basis of an entire culture. <laughs> uh, I must now tell you of the full horror of what awaits you. Ah, you see, Boulders, dress it up in any amount of pompous verbal diarrhoea, and the message is, square heads down for the big Bosch gangbang. <laughs> As an officer and a gentleman, you will be looking forward to a quick and noble death. Well, obviously. But instead, an even worse fate awaits you. Tomorrow, you will be taken back to Germany. Here it comes. To a convent school outside Heidelberg, where you will spend the rest of the war teaching the young girls home economics. <laughs> Uh, For you, as a man of honor, the humiliation will be unbearable. Oh, I think you'll find we're tougher than you imagine. <laughs> I can tell how much you are suffering by your long feces. <laughs> we're not suffering too much to say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> say thank you, Baldrick. Thank you, Baldrick. <laughs> how amusing! But now, forgive me. I must take to these guys once again. <laughs> the noble Lord Flashheart still eludes me. I think you'll find he's overrated. Bad breath and impotent, they say. <laughs> Sexual innuendo! <laughs> but enough of this. As you say in England, I must fly. <laughs> Perhaps I will master this humour after all, yeah? I wouldn't be too honest. <laughs> He's a little fellow. If you get lonely in the night, I'm in the old chateau. There's no pressure. <laughs> Bradford! <laughs> Is it really true, sir? Is the war really over for us? Yep. 
out of the war and teaching nuns how to boil eggs. For us, the great war is finito. A war that would be a damn sight simpler if we just stayed in England and shot 50,000 of our men a week. <laughs> no more mud, death, rats, bombs, shrapnel, whiz-bangs, barbed wire, and those bloody awful songs that have the word whoops in the title. <laughs> oh, damn, he's, he's left the door open. Oh, good, we can escape, sir. Are you mad, Ulrich? I'll find someone to lock it for us. Shush, TV, mum's the word, not half or what? <laughs> So why did you just slam the door on Lieutenant George? I can't believe it. Go away! That's it! It's me! It's me! But what the hell are you doing here? Oh, never mind the hows and the whys and the... Do you mind if I don't? Oh, a Superman to get in here. Well, it's funny you should say that, because uh, as it happens, I did have some help from a rather spiffing bloke. He's taken a break from some crucial top-level shagging. <laughs> it's me! Hooray! <laughs> Dodge potatoes, George! You said noble brother Fryers were in the lurch. If I'd known you meant old slack bladder and the mound of the hound of the Baskervilles, I'd probably let them stew in their own juice. And let me tell you, if I ever tried that, I'd probably drown. <laughs> Still, since I'm here, I may as well do it. As the bishop said to the netball team, come on, chums. Ah, uh, oh, uh, Come on. Uh, yes, look, look I'm, I'm sorry, chaps, but I've splintered my pancreas. Uh, I seem to have this terrible cough. Cards! Cards! Wait, 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 wait a minute. Now, I may be packing the kind of tackle that you'd normally expect to find swinging about between the hind legs of a Grand National winner. But I'm not totally stupid. I've got the kind of feeling you'd rather we hadn't come. No, 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 I'm very grateful. It's just that I'd slow you up. I think I'm beginning to understand. Uh, are you? Huh. Just because I can give multiple orgasms to the furniture just by sitting <laughs> doesn't mean that I'm not sick of this damn war. The blood, the noise, the endless poetry. <laughs> Is that really what you think, Flashard? Of course it's not what I think. Now get out that door before I redecorate that wall in an interesting new colour called Hint of Brain. <laughs> well, that's clear. Let's get back to that lovely wall then. Woof! Woof! Oh. <laughs> Oh, damn, foiled again. What bad luck. Ah, and the Lord Flashart. This is indeed an honor. Finally, the two greatest gentlemen flyers in the world meet. Two men of honor who have jousted together in the cloud-strewn glory of the skies. Face to face at last. How often I have rehearsed this moment of destiny in my dreams. The valor of to encapsulate the unspoken nobility of our comradeship. <laughs> Good Lord. Captain Blackadder, I, I thought you were... Playing tennis? <laughs> no. Dead? Uh, well, yes, unfortunately. Well, I had a lucky escape. No thanks to you. This is a friend of mine. Ah! Hi! <laughs> Flash out. This is Captain Darling. Captain Darling? Funny name for a guy, isn't it? <laughs> Last person I called Darling was pregnant 20 seconds later. <laughs> hey, you couldn't be bothered to help on Slacky here. Oh, well, it, it wasn't quite that, sir. It's just that we weighed up the pros and cons and decided it wasn't a reasonable use of our time and resources. <laughs> well, this isn't a reasonable use of my time and resources, but I'm going to do it anyway. What? This. Oh! <laughs> All right, Slacky. All right, Slacky, I've got to fly. Two million chicks, only one flash art. <laughs> and remember, if you want something, take it. Bobby! My lord. I want something. Take it. <laughs> Get Ah, Blackadder, so you escaped. Yes, sir. Bravo. Don't slouch, darling. <laughs> I was wondering whether, having been tortured by the most vicious sadist of the German army, I might be allowed a week's leave to recuperate, sir. Excellent idea. Your commanding officer would have to be stark raving mad to refuse you. Well, you are my commanding officer. Well? Can I have a week's leave to recuperate, sir? Certainly not. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> 